like going hunting, just me, my hound, and my gun. Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel, now that's my kind of fun. I like going fishing too, I'll go on any whim. Looking for the big bass, the poppy, and the brim. Just give me a wide open field to walk through. Give me an ocean so deep. I want to ride the longest river in the world, or maybe climb the highest mountain peak. Like going down to the fishing hole, my buddies and me and my old cane pole. Bake them hooks and wet them lines, it's the life I love so fine. It's almost supper time, you'd think the world was mine. And now for today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Folks, we're off down here in the middle of Shelby County, Alabama, with my good friend Jerry Gardner. And uh, Jerry is a real master turkey hunter. His lifetime uh, kills of 278 turkeys. He started, what, eight years eight old? Eight years old. Eight years old. And he is truly a master, and he's agreed to take me and uh, show me and, and some of you folks his techniques for taking these turkeys. And uh, we've got uh, some things we've got to cover too, hadn't Jerry? I want to say this, Jerry's going right. to show his techniques, but uh, my brother John has just completed a brand new Outdoor Life Complete Turkey Hunting book, and it covers many more master turkey hunters and all their techniques. And uh, y'all get a pencil and paper at the end of the show, we're going to give you some information on a lot of this stuff we're going to be talking about. And uh, Jerry and I, we have to get started kind of early today so that we can get at it in the morning, don't right, we? we're going to check out some places and get everything lined up for tomorrow. All right, well, I'm, I'm anxious. I'm getting nervous now. I already yeah, got, the art, got knots in my stomach <laughs> thinking about all them turkeys. <laughs> let's go get all with right, it. All right, let's go. And Jerry, let me show you something. It's, it's mighty slick on this setting up for turkeys, deer, anything else. It's what they call a porter blind. And the thing is waterproof and you can get up in there. It's got these little old flaps here that they come, they come down from the top. You pull them down and, and you can just, they, all four corners has got those. And if you get in there, if it's bad weather or anything, you can get in, you put your little chair in there and sit down in there. If it's cold, you can put you one of them little old, you know, hickey things. Yeah, a little and heater. You're not ever gonna get one that's gonna be the same color of the terrain. So I think the best thing to do is just, you know, stob up some of the surrounding vegetation. And of course, we ain't got a lot around here, but we'll, fix it up better and it's mm -hmm. excellent. The, these turkey hunt shows are terrible to film. I mean, you know, one little movement so he can get inside there and whatever he's got to do, the equipment and all, this is what we film out of our deers right. and turkeys. And we're going to give the folks the information on where to get these porter blinds and their phone number at the end of the show. But it's real simple. It ain't nothing in the world but a little old frame deal. Takes you about less than a minute to put it together. And these little hickeys are all tied together with a little spring so you don't lose them. See right there? See how they do? Yeah, that's and you nice. You stop it up and you can adjust it anywhere you want it to go. Throw that little curtain over it. Or if you if you roosted a turkey, you go in there the night before, or the evening, you know, and go ahead and set it up. Then all you got to do is got a little door in the back and you just climb right in that little old door and you're in there concealed and he won't ever see you. That's as neat as it can be. So, and, and you put it in a little old bag there. It don't take just a second. You put it in that bag and Throw it on your shoulder and come on out of the woods with it. That's great. That Pretty looks slick. nice. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette. Like volume 21, Dangerous Hunting. Boar hunting takes you on a wild boar hunt in South Alabama where the hunter becomes the prey. Alligator hunting takes you to the swamps of Louisiana for a strange but exciting alligator hunt. And rattlesnake takes you deep in South Alabama for an educational afternoon full of fangs and rattles. So ask for dangerous hunting at your local video store. Archie, I thought we would show the folks how to set up one of these temporary blinds here. All right, now why, why have you picked this particular kind of area right here? This is a real good feeding area for the turkeys. The turkeys comes through on these little tender shoots, this honeysuckle, uh -huh. picks those out and the little tips of ferns and stuff. And it's an ideal spot for them, and we know that they're all around in here anyway. Well, we can see back in here approximately 40 yards or so, about in every direction, can't we? Right, and this is not up high enough that we can't see the turkey. We can see him over the top of it if he it's tries real to sneak dry. up on us. He ain't going to slip up on this dry. You hear him coming, won't right. you? Right. All right, let's show them how we do this. Now, this is your favorite way of doing it, ain't it? Yeah. 
All right. Now, what is this stuff right here, Jay? This is just some old mosquito netting. Is you it can find it some of the clothing goods stores. The clothing, sporting goods have it? They, yeah, some of the sporting goods has it, All too. right, and, and you've just taken some uh, canes, just little pieces of cane, had not Right. It's about four foot wide. It gets about a five foot piece of cane. All right, now then just shove them down in the ground. Right. All right, now you don't Stick need it right all the way around, around you, do you, Jerry? No, just right around in front of you. I got you. Because you'll be up against that tree. All right, now uh, some of the people's telling that me about on the tree, you said a lot of them want to get in the, on behind the very biggest tree in the air, but some of the guys I've been reading about, they say, well, get behind the next biggest one because the turkey will look at the biggest one. That's exactly right, that is true. And so you just roll it out and stop it up, isn't that right? Right. Push it on down to ground level. Now, Try to get it good and tight so the wind won't blow it so bad. Now, correct me, Jerry, is, is the purpose for this now is to make sure that whenever you have to make some slight move, that he don't catch you moving. Isn't that right? That's right. Now, a lot of people think turkeys can't see, but I know if you're sitting here real still and a, a flicker just and you're just sitting there using split vision, and the wind is dead still, a, a spire, you can spot him. Right, that's exactly so right. So it, it stands to reason that a turkey, he's probably got better eyes than we have. Sure if we take our head and go, he's done seen us. pick it up just like that. So this net kind of mutes that, doesn't it? I mean, in other words, it makes it where he can't detect it with this mesh in there. That's right. It helps, helps block it out some. Now, some people use Mask, I like this particular mask because I wear glasses. It's got little cut holes in it, and it goes over my whole head. Yeah. You you use a little Scarf. bandana deal, uh -huh. don't Pull you? Pull up over my nose. And uh, and what else do some of these folks use? Yeah, this is real simple. When it's real cold anyway, it's good to wear around your neck like this. Uh-huh. This fixes up like an old Western outlaw. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> now, now, a lot of people like to put the smear stuff on them. Uh, yeah. Do you like that? It's okay, and it, uh, the type that has the insect repellent in it is helpful. Okay. Because the mosquitoes are that, rough. That's one thing you better remember, bring some mosquito repellent. That's right. That's one reason I like this kind. It keeps them mosquitoes off of your head and all. Uh, one other thing now, a lot of people here in the south hunt turkeys. Mm -hmm. Now, we might be done roosted this turkey over here this evening, and another fella knows there's one in the general area, and we don't know he knows one's in there. Mm -hmm. And so he comes in from that road down yonder, and you come in from this road up here, and y'all are real close together, like maybe even 40 yards. You, you could go undetected 40 yards from you another sure man, could, couldn't you? Right. All right. Now, these turkeys, they got red heads, and they can instantaneously turn to blue, and then they can turn to white. So anything that's red, white, or blue could be a turkey head. Right. And a ruffle in the bushes there, you don't shoot at nothing unless you got your eye right on that turkey. Don't go shooting in bushes and all that kind of foolishness, because you're gonna miss him anyway if you do that, ain't you, Jerry? That's right. So we want to caution everybody when you're out here turkey, want to enjoy the sport, but for goodness sakes, keep your mind on your business, make sure you see the turkey good and clean, and don't shoot at shaking bushes or noises. Make sure you got him out there, and if, if he's too far away, let him go on, come back tomorrow and get him. That's don't exactly don't right. make one of them long shots out there and just cripple that turkey up. Well, he comes in there just right, 30, no more than about 35 steps. I mean, I hear these guys shooting at 50, 60 and stuff like that. But no, that's luck. That's luck. Mm -hmm. It's just long shots. So wait, get him on in there, and that's part of the sport anyway, is calling him that's in. That's exactly it? right. So if you miss him, it don't matter. You still had a good hunt. Yeah. If you didn't shoot, you had a good hunt. You go and back the next day because you know he's still around there somewhere close. There you go. All right, let's move down the line here. All right, Jerry, let's, let's say we got some new folks out there that's really wanting to get started turkey hunting. Let's get them started off simple. What would you, what would you put them on? All right, I, a box call is usually the best one to start out with. And there's several of them out on the market. Of course, Lynch, they make one of the real good boxes. And a lot of the other companies has copied that Lynch box real close. It's just a real good box caller. And, uh, it's one of the goblin boxes good one because you can you can use one side sounds like an old gobbler and the other side sounds like a hen and then you can gobble with it also so it's a three in one collar that's pretty good isn't it 
Uh, and that's what you recommend for the beginner. Right. And, and what call. call, show me, if he had to do one call, what would it be now? He one. goes, sits down in the woods like we done showed him how to do, and he, he takes it, and what's the call you want to put him on? An old cluck is a real good call. It goes all the way back to the old timers. They'd cluck one time and wait several minutes, and then maybe cluck two or three times and wait several minutes, and that does kill a turkey. All right, show us a cluck. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette, like volume 19, Cooking from the Wild. Deer butchering shows how to butcher deer into steaks, hamburger, and even sausage. While Outdoorsman's Feast is a cooking show of many different game and wild plants to prepare an extravagant feast with all the trimmings. So ask for Outdoors with Archie Phillips, Cooking from the Wild, at your local video store or nearby sporting goods dealer. This is our best to do it.
What is a good one? <laughs> wow, what a pretty one. Boy, he's a Look nice one. Look at that thing. What in the world? Boy. He's got a nice beard mm -hmm. on him. It's that tail, mm -hmm. that old red. Well, now, how, Wild turkey tail. How old a turkey reckon that is? Shoot, I imagine he's at least three years old or better. There's something about back here. Is this the way you tail back here on these lines? Yeah, this uh, real Is it dark, those little dark, dark lines? Yeah, and the brown on the tips right there. Uh-huh. Boy, oh, boy. Let me hold that thing see. How much you figure he weighs? He probably weighed uh, better than 19 pounds. I imagine Goodness 19 gracious. better. Look at He's that a good one. Let's see, I got my little measuring stick I keep with me. We can rough it. Goodness gracious alive. Now, Jerry, that ain't long as some of them I've seen. It's pretty good in the way, ain't it? Yeah, that's a pretty good beard. We'll see how long that thing is. He's got a big old head on him. Look at that where he's been. He's been gobbling some, you can tell. Got that old fatty built up on his Boy, chest. Boy, he wasn't the least bit scaredy fied, was he? No, and this, these old swamp turkeys, they got plenty to eat and everything. They're looking pretty good this year. Eating them acorns down in here on the water oaks. I see. What does Let's it look see. like? Let's see if I can get that thing. I've got to go to the longest hair. The longest hair? Yeah. Okay. It's about it's about ten and a quarter inches. That ain't bad, is it? Uh-uh, it's not bad at all. What about it's his old fighting spurs? spurs? Okay, them's them got a pretty needle point on it there too. Let's see. That right there is that's Right, see, it's right on the inch mark. That's, well, that's, that's pretty good, ain't it? It is. That's an inch. I tell you right what, there. there was a big old tree, and when he hopped up there on that log, I figured he's gonna get behind that tree. Of course, he'd have been on your side then, and that would be <laughs> just tough. But uh, I couldn't resist. You know what I thought about when I seen him hop up on that log? I don't know if you saw that old Sergeant York show that time, and he'd gobble at that old turkey and he'd stick his head up. Yeah. I thought about that old that's turkey. It was behind that log, and old. Sergeant York shot that time in that movie there. Yeah, making them Germans, they didn't know what a turkey was. That's sticking their head out to sea. Well, now, Jerry, I know you done all the work because you roosted this thing yesterday and been kind of keeping up with them down here. And I, now, I want you to know, I sure do appreciate it. But, buddy, that was a... Now, while we were sitting in the blind, a lot of guys tell you don't call. But he was fixing to go either way, wasn't he? That's right. What was you doing back there? Man, you were doing all kind of little old low stuff. Yeah, I was doing some stuff to try to get him a little excited. I was hoping we'd get him to strut a little bit, but he a little bit too sharp for that. Yeah. He'd just come off of the roost, and he'd stretched his wings, and he'd just come down. He was ready, he ready to get started. He wasn't quite awake, was he? Uh-uh. If we'd have had a, about another half hour or so, he'd have started been getting getting right and starting strutting and stuff like that. But you, just you take off. the shot you got, don't That's you? That's right. That's <laughs> I noticed he stretched that head a minute. I, I don't believe he could have seen us, though, the way we had that blind set up. Now, you tell me, like in this open country, you just like a blind, don't That's you? That's right. That temporary blind is great to carry with you. It's really worth it. It comes in handy a lot of time. You got to move sometime in spite of anything. I mean, if he comes up on the wrong side, you got to get around there, had you? That's right. Or you just tell and me you, you shot one left-handed. You just had to guess where you shot this I last sure week. I sure did. That's something that people need to practice on right there. If they're right-handed yeah. and they turkey hunting, they ought to shoot some left-handed because they may have to take that left-handed shot. Well, I want to tell the folks too now, Jerry is not a, uh, a novice turkey hunter. His lifetime kill is 278 turkeys. So, uh, you know, like a fellas tell me the other day, there's turkey callers that win contests and there's turkey getters. <laughs> and Jerry falls in the category of a turkey getter, so uh, I really I really appreciate you bringing me out here and, and let me shoot one of yours, Jerry. You done limited out this season anyway, had you? Just about it. I've, I've got, uh, I've got five. Five, uh-huh. And I'm, I'm gonna try to hold out for one more big one if I can. I've called up some for some other folks. Uh-huh. Six good turkeys. Uh-huh. But they hadn't been gobbling that good, though. Two it's or three times. It's been a times, crazy year, hasn't it? Sure has. Two or three times they gobble, and, and then you just have to wait around and, and get on him as quick as you can and hope for the best. Well, now you told me that, that sometimes you can get them pretty good in the afternoons now. Is that That's right? That's right. You can. Uh, seems like this year's been a good year for the evening hunting. All right. Well, I tell you what I'm gonna do. Let's get on back and we'll get us some breakfast, 
And uh, if you like, I want, we're going to go out and I want to talk about some other things here that you know about turkey hunting and maybe go out there and I'll watch you this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay? I hope I can have as good luck as you did. That, that, was, that, was, a, that was a good shot. You blowed him off of that log. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Well, you know, one other thing I want, want to tell the folks too, Jerry, uh, I've been shooting this old Model 12 uh, Winchester, and that's what folks mostly call a turkey gun. It's that. Mine's a 1928 model. And it sure does do a good job. Squirrel turkey sure most does. Anything, he didn't but... he didn't know what he did. <laughs> Let's go to the barn. All right. Oh boy, that's a fine blind right there too, Jerry. Yeah, that that covers you up good, man. You can be behind that thing. You can get away with a little bit of movement in yeah. that. That they think that wind messes them up sometimes. Sometimes it gets to blowing in a little bit, and that I have had them to see it when the wind started blowing pretty good. Yeah. Get a little cautious. I got you. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette. Like volume 18, Louisiana Duck Hunting. Louisiana is gifted with the world's best flyway and a cast of characters that provide that southern flavor. Our guests have harvested many ducks and they bring their techniques home to you. You learn how to set decoys and a calling lesson you'll never forget. So ask for Louisiana Duck Honey at your favorite video store or nearby sporting goods dealer. I'll tell you one thing, Jerry. That sure was some, some mighty fine scouting. I tell you, yeah. calling and all that's important. And I, I believe I could took that little small box and called. But you know, you ain't got to be a real good turkey hunter. We go with a fella that says, now if you sit right there and do what I tell you, he gonna come trucking down. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it, cause he done exactly what he was supposed to do. And of course you killing 278 turkeys, I guess you've had enough experience to know what they're supposed to do. But uh, we've had a good day, we've had a long day. That's right. Might as well get on back to the house there. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Crank her up and let's go. Okay. For today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Now, folks, what you're hearing is a master turkey caller, but more especially a master turkey getter. Uh, Jerry Gardner here has got over uh, 278 turkeys he's took home upside down for the table. 
and he's got techniques and stuff that you've probably never seen or heard of, but he is a master at it. And uh, he told me if I'd come down this afternoon for in the morning, you, you got a few things you're going right. to show me, ain't you? Show you, show you some, some areas. Some areas. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, uh, my, my brother John has just finished a real fine turkey technique book. It's called the Outdoor Life Complete Turkey Hunting uh, Book here. And y'all get a pencil and piece of paper toward the end of the show. We're going to give you some information on both the book and several other things. And uh, Jerry uh, owns the Heart of Dixie uh, Turkey Calling Company. And I promise you, he knows how to make them come in. And uh, I'm anxious to see these areas we're going to be in in the morning. And uh, it's always a good idea to go in and check them That's out. That's right. We need to go now and look around and check out some of these areas. I'd like to show you some before in the morning. I'm getting nervous already. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> What we got here now, Jerry? This is some old turkeys comes up on these ant hills, and they'll grab them little white grubs right there. You saw them, them little, little things right there? Yeah, they'll eat those. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, well, they just scratch it, that top of that mound off. There, there they are all in there. Yeah, Look you at see that. them right there. The, the ants are carrying them down in a hurry. Now, I don't know how in the world that they grab them and get going like they do without getting stung, but they'll sure eat them. Well, now, they also dust in these old ant beds, right. don't they? The, most of the ones that's deserted is the ones that they, it don't have many ants left in them. I see. They'll get dust in those. All right, so that fire ants do have some redeeming value, don't they? <laughs> they must do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on and get some more stuff okay. going here. Okay, this right here, the small dropping is a hen dropping, and it's like a little question mark. Uh-huh. And uh, the gobbler is a lot larger. Gobbler the dropping is a lot larger in, 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 in diameter, and it's in a round ball. It's even on, it can be a lot larger than this. This looks like a young gobbler here. Uh huh. And if you see these around in a food plot or out in the woods, you know the gobbler's there. In other words, he go to looking good. Right. Because he's close in there. That's right. That's a good deal. This right here is a dusting place. Turkey find an old ain't bed where they've deserted it. Uh huh. And it's a uh, Big old open place is an ideal spot for them to dust. And, and get in there and get them bugs and lice off of them and things. And if you find something fresh like this, you know the turkey's not far away from there. In other words, that, that dust gets, makes uh, the bugs get off of them. Is that what it does? Right, throwing it up there on them, it really freshens them up. They, they really enjoy that. Okay. And wallow around in there and, and, and dust real good and shake it off and then go on about your business. If you see a good fresh and you need to kind of scout that area good, because going to be some turkeys right in there. They're right in there close, that's right. That's a good deal. Now, Jerry, what have you got right there now? This right here is a, a target of a turkey's head, and it's an actual x-ray of a wild turkey. It shows the vital areas that you hit him. And they can pick this type target up at the sporty goods store, and they're furnished by Winchester free. All right, now, if you don't pattern your gun, and we're talking about 30 steps to 35 is max you ought to be shooting. Right. I don't care we got magnums or whatever. That's common sense shooting, ain't it, Jim? That's right. And anything this side of 30 is a bonus, isn't it? It sure is. <laughs> it is. That's most definitely right. All right, now we're going to take a, take, you've done pattern your gun. We're going to take mine and pattern it. and just. See, and that way we can look at this when we take it down and know what my gun's doing. Then when I see that turkey out there, I know what i got to do right. to get on him, don't I? See how many shots you can get in that head. All right, now, where is your aiming spot? I would say about where the neck goes into the breast area between there and the Is that where the feathers head. and the neck kind of come together? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me back off here and see what happens. All right. Ready? Like it got a good pattern there. Yeah. Take it up there and look at it. Isn't that pretty good, ain't you? It sure is. That's real good. You got a lot of shots in the head. Got one right there dead in his brain. Let's sure go up have. here and get a little better look at this thing. That one right there in the brain would have killed him. All right, now, Jerry, let's get it where we can see it now, them little specks in there. I had, uh, sure. starting off there, let me see if I got 
but I was shooting Remington Express number six. All right, and from the shot, there's one dead in the brain. All right. One in the vertebrae here, one, one there. One, two, three, four, four five, five six, six, seven. In the vertebrae. Seven death shots right, right there. And then lots of them just in the neck around. I got a good many slightly over here, so my, my pattern spread is still pretty tight for 30 yards. It sure is. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, that whole square would almost be a killing square for, sure for this would. particular gun. It's, right. I'm shooting a Model 12, 1928 model. Uh, 30 inch full choke with Remington Expresses. Now, what do you what do you hunt your turkeys with? I've been using a 1300 pump. 1300 pump. The, the new turkey special that's out. This has been out for about two years, I think. All right. And it really shoots good. What length barrel and what shell? It's you 22 shoot? inch barrel, and I've been using the two by sixes. You got any of them on you? Two by sixes. We got some laying right here. Let mm -hmm. me let me pick one of them up and show these folks what they look like. All right. Yeah, this is this hasn't been out but a couple of years also, but there's a lot of people really two like it. Two by six. Now, what does that mean? It's number two shot up towards the front, and then behind it is number six shot. And the idea of that is for those number twos to get through the little brush and stuff, and those sixes to come in right behind it. I got you. Okay, so you're satisfied with my pattern at 30 yards. It's great. Okay. All right, let's go do something else. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette, like volume 16, Catfish. Jug fishing teaches you the art of catching catfish with quart jugs, while Jump Box shows a fast and easy way to set a trot line. Box fishing shows how to use slap boxes, and grabbing catfish shows the technique of catching catfish out of submerged logs. So ask for catfish at your local video store or nearby sporting goods dealer. When you're looking for turkey signs and you see they're scratching, always look real close and they'll scratch in a V shape. In other words, you can tell that from a squirrel tracking or anything like that because it'll always be in a V. That's right. What Most about often. deers now? What's the difference in that the way deers kind of work in a there? A deer will scratch out when he makes his, it's round, more rounded. I see. The turkeys, they'll be spotted here and there and around different little spots and he'll just scratch over there and over there and over there, and you can tell by just following right along behind him. In other words, this is his direction of travel? Right, in the shape of the V. In other that words, that'd be, always going if, that way. If you come in here and you see, you see a good little bit fairly random, you'll know that they've been traveling that way sometime during the day, isn't it? Right. Now, is it true, too, uh, Jerry, some people tell me that 30% of the turkeys are killed without ever calling. He said, if a yes. guy's in a turkey place and he's got the patience, he knows, like, just like what you're showing there, that they're traveling through there every day at some time. Mm -hmm. He could set up in a good blind, and he could take a time with never calling a lick. He could. There's a lot of old hunters that, that don't do anything but just cluck. Some One of the time, old timers just cluck right. ever so often, just cluck. And you no know, turkeys feeding through there, pick that up, and they want to go up there and check it out. And, and they just nail them. That's right. And that's, you sort of weight them out when you do that. It's a little bit harder. But it's, it's some fun hunting if you love steer hunting. And, and a lot of people does like to hunt the turkey gobbling and chasing him and stuff like that, and it's a lot of fun too. Yeah. But if you really want to get down with it, you get an area where he's using it, set up on him like that, that's a lot of fun too. Okay. <laughs> Archie, here's a real good strutting area right here. You can see where the old turkey has been strutting. He cut a figure eight in here. You can uh -huh. see his wing marks. He was showing out, hoping some hens could see him in here. And they'll come around. I got a wing here to give you an idea of how they do. These wing feathers make these cut marks when he struts. And you see an old gobbler. When you kill one and his, his wings is all bent up and broke off and wore, you can tell he's really been doing a lot of strutting on, on the tips. All so. right, well, let me ask you, is this a, a one-time, one-day deal, or is this a regular thing, a regular place he comes to? It's, uh, they use them pretty regular. 
In other words, they get a place they like to do this strutting, and that's where they do it. Right, and if they're not bothered with people spooking them up and stuff like that, and they're pretty well left alone, they'll come back and do this, and this is their show-off spot. And them hens will know right where he is and come right to it. In other words, is do they normally like these old logging roads and sandy places? That's what they usually like? Yeah, right out in the open where they can be seen. Where they can be seen. You well, know, this is kind of a little rise right here. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Sandy little old logging road back in here. Okay. Jerry, that's uh, using one of your Hardy Dixie mouth calls, isn't it? What, what style is that? This is a double reed collar, and it's a real good one for a beginner or a pro. Well, now, it seems like all the fellas I know that start turkey hunting, they don't get on the mouth call until after they've mastered several other calls. Is it more difficult, or are they just afraid to start? It's a little more difficult, and it's good to get one of them and, and, and play with it a good while. When you're riding back and forth to work, put it in your mouth and roll it around when you're away from the wife, because she'll run you off. If oh, you... yeah, it runs a lot of people <laughs> off. <laughs> my, my wife liked to run me off the first year or two. I was playing with that thing. But, uh, Jerry, you can do a you can do a mouth call, too. Just regular straight out without anything, can't you? Mm -hmm. Give us a little demonstration. What in the world you even care call around with you for? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> That's mighty good. That's like come this 278 turkey's been on the dinner table, isn't it? <laughs> All right, Jerry, yeah. let's, let's say we got some new folks out there that's really wanting to get started turkey hunting. Let's get them started off simple. What would you, what would you put them on? All right, I, a box call is usually the best one to start out with. And there's several of them out on the market. Of course, Lynch, they make one of the real good boxes and a lot of the other companies has copied that Lynch box real close. It's just a real good box collar. And uh, it's one of the goblin boxes a good one because you can, you can use one side, it sounds like an old gobbler, and the other side sounds like a hen, and then you can gobble with it also. So it's a three-in-one collar. That's pretty good, isn't it? Uh, and that's what you recommend for the beginner. Right. And, and box what call. call? Show me if he had to do one call, what would it be now? He one. goes sits down in the woods like we done showed him how to do, and he, he takes it, and what's the call you want to put him on? An old cluck is a real good call. It goes all the way back to the old timers. It'd cluck one time and wait several minutes, and then maybe cluck two or three times and wait several minutes. And that does kill a turkey. All right, show us a cluck. That's mm -hmm. all they got to do, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I had a fella told me this old gentleman killed a lot of turkeys. I asked him what he did. He said he'd get in his truck right up the road. He heard one. He'd get out and walk out there and sit down and take that box and go boop one time. Mm -hmm. And that's all he did. And he'd sit there and he'd come to it. And it's a known fact that a turkey will come and check out where he heard that sound sometimes during the day. He's going to check it out. See what happened. All right, what else would you put a... Uh, what's the next collar you'd put a man on? All right, a slate collar is the next thing that's a good, easy collar to use for a beginner. A slate, that is just a piece of slate, isn't it? Right, just a regular old-timey blackboard slate. Uh-huh. And they make a real good cluck, too. A thing in the world wrong with that. All right, now let me ask you right now before we get some people in trouble. There's a fine line of difference between a cluck and a putt. Tell them yep. what the difference is, Jerry. 
The cluck has got a dead sound and is a moment of hesitation. That's a cluck. Right. And then that's 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 used when they're sneaking through the woods and wanting to get together with one another. They ain't mad about nothing. They ain't upset nothing. about nothing. They're not upset at all. They're just talking and wanting to know where their buddies are, and they're just slipping through one. All right, now. Now, what's a putt now? What what does that denote? It's real, real and sharp. And when if you mess up and make that sound, you, you he's going to sift the leaves. In other words, you got to get on back to the house. That's hey? right. All right, show them what a putt is so that they won't mess up and make this call on a slate or a call or anything. All right, I'll try it with my natural voice and on the, di the slate. OK. And that means trouble, don't it? That's right. You done saw you or saw something didn't like and it's fixing to leave. Okay. And it scares the rest of them. I got you. That's a warning sign, ain't it? Mm -hmm. And the old gobbler will be listening. He takes off with them too, don't he? That's right. He runs to the bushes. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette. Like volume 15, The Lost Art of Jigger Pole Fishing. Jigger Pole Fishing was a popular fishing technique of many old timers, and Randy Howell has brought this extremely productive method to new heights. This video explains all the equipment needed and how to use it for an exploding topwater show. Each and every strike is seen as the fish actually takes the bait. So ask for volume 15, The Lost Art of Jigger Pole Fishing at your local video store.
Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette. Like volume 14, Survival on Wild Edibles. JT Dabs, a wild edible expert, shows you how to find these plants in the wild and how to properly prepare them into a tasty feast. Archie also shows how to build primitive fires with fire by friction. For an educational tour through Mother Nature, ask for Outdoors with Archie Phillips Survival on Wild Edibles at your local video store. Jerry, this thing get heavy, buddy. Boy, that uh, looks like a good in there. I tell you what, I don't know what he weighed, but look at that beard on it. Boy, thing. he's got a nice, and I bet Ain't that's that at least 10 inches or better there. Yeah. Look at that pretty tail. Boy, it is old southeastern turkey, old red, real dark red tail. Yeah. Let's go see if we can All get right. you one now. You need to, that's a pretty one. Mm. Woo! Well, Jerry, I just want to tell you again how much I've learned today. We take him on the house for skinning him and get ready to go. Y'all folks stay tuned again next time for some more Outdoors with Archie Phillips. Today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Folks, I just got through reading my brother, John Phillips' Outdoor Life Complete Turkey Hunting book here. It is most excellent. It's got techniques by many of the master turkey hunters in America. And I got a lot of good ideas and all, but I've come off down here to Shelby County to the Heart of Dixie Turkey Call Company and Mr. Jerry Gardner here and he's going to give me some hands-on experience this afternoon and in the morning on the way he hunts turkeys. Now, he's quarter Cherokee on both sides of his family and has taken 278 turkeys since he was eight years old. And I can promise you, not only is he a turkey caller, he's a turkey getter. And I can't wait to get out there in the woods with you, Jerry. Well, I hope we get some. Let's go have at it. All right, I'm ready. And Jerry, what I'm gonna do, I'm building me just a little corral. This way you do it. Right. Just stick a few down in there and kind of break us up. Is that what you wanna do? Mm hmm It's worth it to take the time and cut a few limbs, ease around and do it real quiet. If you're gonna set up on an old gobbler for a couple hours, it's it's worth it. All right, now, the so we got a, we can see through and we got a kind of a half moon. We got a tree in it. That ain't the biggest tree in here. About all we got right in this area though, isn't right. it? Right. And so we just take our position Right in here like this, right here. And uh, if we need 
we got some blind spot. We got some bushes in front of us right there. That that breaks that up. Mm -hmm. And we we got enough right in there. So if he comes that way, we got a clean shot right through here. If he comes in behind me, we're gonna have trouble. Just yeah. gonna have to do the best we can. Yeah, I'll hope that he he'll come on past you far enough that you can get a shot. So all they got to do is just cut them down a few little old limbs and. Uh, now, as quiet, as, as dry as this ground is right here, it'd be a good idea to clear the whole area that your feet are going to be in, right? It will, and when you go in an area close to where there are turkeys and you scratch that out real easy like that, if a turkey hears it, a lot of times you don't pay it that much attention because he thinks it's another turkey scratching. Okay. So you can get by with it. So, it in other words, they, the, your advice to a hunter is to get there about 20 minutes before the crack of day or where you can just barely see, yeah. to see the terrain if he hadn't been in there the day before. Right. And if he knows his turkey's in there, just go in there and cut him a few little bushes and stop him down. Mm -hmm. You like the blind till what, nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah, something like that. Then the sun comes up and starts shining on the blind and then they can pick that up. They can pick so. that up. So you'd have to go back to a natural blind or, or a porter blind, something right. of that nature. Mm -hmm. But this is what you'd choose after nine, would you, right. for afternoon hunting, that type of thing. Sure would. Okay. Archie, here's one for slow learners. Maybe I can use this one here. <laughs> well, you just pull this little stick. Right. And you can pull the stick or push the button. That ain't so bad. Oh, it's foolproof. I notice it's got a slate on the back here too, hadn't it? Yeah. So in other words, you can get it one way or the other. You got a double call, hadn't mm -hmm. you? I won't tell them about these slates. You need to take you some sandpaper right. and always keep them where you. They will need sand in there too. Cause you get, easy. you get all kind of crazy noises, don't you? That's right. You need right. to take what, that sandpaper with you. What other kind of collars that uh, you got in your pile right there, Jay? Right, this is a real good one here that, that Ben Lee makes. It's been around for several, several years. It's a, it's a trough type collar with aluminum inside. You make some good clucks and yips with it. Boy, that's got a good sound to it. And it's hard to mess up with that one, too. I see. Because you're going right down that trough. All right, show me one of them old-timey calls you got there. Okay, here's the way the Indian started out was with a turtle shell and a slate. And the volume comes right out the front. And a certain place you strike at gives you a certain sound, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You need to find the good spots. You need to, when you start out yipping with a collar, no matter how long anybody's turkey hunted, they can't just pick up one and go to yipping on it right off. They need to practice with it, turn it around, yip on in the corners and in the middle and just everything. Just yip all around on it. All right, show me your wing bone there now. Okay. I could do this better with this. Okay. Thing. Okay, the wing bone is one of the oldest collars too. It started out with the Indians. And there's been two or three of them found in, in graves in Alabama. So it goes way, way back. So they knew how to call them up back in them days too. That's right, they? and if you could kill a nice turkey, you'll make a collar out of it. All right, you'll... show us how that works now. Darn good call. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's that's goes through them pretty good. Now, I want you to, uh, if you will, Jerry, go through from the time they hit the ground on through the different calls and why you use them, using your mouth call. Okay, we'll do it with a tree yip. We start out in the morning, the, the turkey starts out, it yips real low before it flies down off of the roost. And old gobbler can hear that 75 yards a lot of times or better. And that's the tree yip. Okay. That's the one that usually you're going to get him on, too, ain't it? That's a real good one. 
Okay, and then what as just proceed through the calls and tell me what you're doing and why you're doing it. Okay, we'll start out next with an assembly call. That's a good one after you yep with the tree yep. If you if you yep that several times, you don't get any response. Response go into a, an assembly call like the old hen, mama hen. No, well, that's just to gather them up. Mm -hmm. That's just a louder tree call, basically, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what's next? Next, a good one to use to make an old turkey gobble in areas that hadn't been hunted a whole lot, especially, is the fly down cackle. Okay. And that gets them excited in springtime. That's, uh, he's flying down in cackle. Is that what they call cutting, too? Uh, it, it's close to a cut. A cut has a lot more choppy, uh, radical sounds to it. If you want me to do the cut, yeah, I'll do, the do cut that. Yeah, do the cut on it. That's really there, really. Right, that, that hen's excited. If she gets him excited, he'll almost turn flips over that one. That really tears him up. That's right? a good one, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, what else is some other calls that you use out here? And, and, and just uh, mix them up a lot of times. If uh, you try a lot of those and they don't work and you're still staying in there pretty late, I just mix up those callers, do an assembly, yep. Which one you get 90% of your turkeys on? Um, the turkeys in areas where they've been bothered a lot, the good low assembly type yep is real good. Just occasionally do that and throw in some of those clucks. And just remember, patience. I was reading an article that Dale Boy said that uh, that people going in and, and call a lot, he waits they leave the woods. A lot of times they get the turkey stirred up, but he won't come in because of activity. Mm -hmm. Wait about an hour and a half and go back in with a little quiet, soft cluck. And said them turkeys just walk right on in there, on up in the day, 10, 30, 11, 12 o'clock, and he busts them. That's right. They feel safe. They feel like everything is, is well, settled down. Anything else in the calling you need to tell our viewers? Not that I know of. I guess except well, You don't for tell the, them one other thing about the turkey wing? Yeah, there's a lot of people does use the turkey wing because during the, the mating season, that right there tears an old gobbler up too. Uh, you can yep on the collar and flop it around on the ground. If you've tried everything else and everything has failed, this is a good last resort. You okay. can't lose if it's a last resort. I got you. And this is one where you need to be hid real good and you need your gun ready because he might run right up in your face. There you go. It's like rattling a buck up. There you go. put some clucks in there too, like an old gobbler has come up and, and, and got with the hen and met her. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to do it too loud, because he can pick that up a good way. Now, the main thing that most of us out here in the woods don't realize, Jerry, is how far off those turkeys can hear. That's exactly right. They got us beat by a long shot. And then going through the woods and rattling and banging and carrying on, that ain't the best thing either, is it? That's right, it isn't. I know one time I was walking through the woods. This is one of them things where you just don't, it's just luck here, but I had an old Liam caught my jacket, and old gobbler was in the area, and he heard that raking sound. It sounded like a feather, mm -hmm. and that thing gobbled and come running right up in my face, and, boop, 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 and took off before I could even do anything. Jerry, that's just, real good. That's that's a good 
learning session on calling. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette, like volume 12, Deer Hunting Techniques. Dr. Bob Shepard has taken over 370 deer by observing deer habits throughout each season. Bob demonstrates how to use map, wind direction, and feeding habits to predict just how a particular buck will use funnel areas to move from one plot of land to another. He also shows how to choose a tree for your stand and how to approach that tree with different wind directions. So ask for deer hunting techniques at your local video store. Wow, Jerry, I tell you what, this scouting is, is about an all-day affair, ain't it? It sure is. I tell you what, I'm so hungry, I believe I could eat a horse. Well, you're in luck today. Chris, today? You're, that's right. Chris has cooked us up some wild turkey breast back at the house. You got to be kidding. Nope. There's fine. I tell you what, we ain't got to vote on right, that. Let's, let's do go. it. <laughs> Chris was nice enough to take some of these turkeys that Jerry been shooting and fix them into a nice plate. And of course, Jerry, you do the dressing of them. And uh, how about telling us how you get it ready for her to, to do the cooking on? Right, you just uh, take the feathers off any way you want to or skin it and then debone the breast and then slice it up like you would a Thanksgiving turkey. Only it's not cooked. Just not, cut just it raw. across the grain, right. And then I turn it over to her. All right, then what do you do with it, Chris? Okay, I soak it in buttermilk first. Uh, for preferably a couple of hours uh -huh. it's better. If you are running late and don't have time, you can just dip it in buttermilk. Salt and pepper it real good. Then just roll it in flour, put it in your skillet with some hot oil, and fry it up nice and brown and crisp. And then you got a plate full of super duper turkey, head. Yeah, why don't you taste of this, Archie? I think I will try what one now. What you think now. about it? Mmm. -hmm. The outside's almost as good as the turkey. <laughs> you do? I'm about ready to sit down and have some. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's great. Now you folks at home know how to fix your wild turkey. Don't let nobody tell you the wild taste is wild. That tastes awful domestic to me. <laughs> <laughs> Better than domestic. <laughs> Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette. Like volume 10, Rabbit Hunting. Rabbit hunting is a southern tradition that will teach you good gun handling techniques. Melvin Stewart has a pack of beagles that will know how to keep those cottontails moving. So when you're in the mood for a fast moving, action packed adventure, ask for Outdoors with Archie Phillips Rabbit Hunting at your local video store or nearby sporting goods dealer.
Archie, where's yours? Well, Jerry, I'm gonna tell you. Now, I've done everything you told me to do. And, and the old turkey done everything he was supposed to do. Getting them up in sight ain't that hard. <laughs> it's that last nurturing them on end, that little thing you do in your mouth call there that uh, I ain't mastered that, Jerry. <laughs> and I was afraid if I said any more, I was gonna say too much. If I said any less, he's gonna walk off. And he just walked around out there. If I had me about a shotgun that'd shoot about 85 yards, <laughs> I believe nice. I could have killed him. But it wasn't no use to take a shot at me. Just and I never could bring him on in, and that's more than half of it, ain't it? Getting yeah. him in that last few little feet. Yeah, but that's good holding out like that and waiting he gets up there close enough. That's what really I, pays I give off. him a silent treatment like you told me to do, old silent cow, you know, and <laughs> I waited, but. I don't know, he, he just might have thought I didn't do it just right or something, but he didn't come on. He'll be out there to get him the next day. What you got there? I got a pretty good one here. I believe you. Boy, how much do you reckon that thing would weigh? He'd probably weigh close to 19 pounds. Boy, that's a pretty thing. Goodness gracious alive. Let's see, it's got a pretty pretty thick beard for a while. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. Old southeastern turkey. Yeah. About 10 inches long, so I imagine. Boy, that is fine. And he's got some pretty good fighting spurs on him there too. Man, Imagine he's I... flogged a few. Well now, did he, uh, did he do right or did you have to monkey with him a while? He really didn't do exactly right. He gobbled about three times and I had to work with him about like you did, but I was just a little luckier than you was. He came on in, he got a little too superstitious. You little... reckon some of these turkeys have had a lot of people calling in reason they wouldn't just come on over to me? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. There's a lot of them that does that. They just been fooled with and they're real cautious. I got you. All right, let's take him on in. Outdoors with Archie Phillips is now available on video cassette, like volume nine, Saltwater. From King Mackerel Fishing with Jim McDonald to Amberjack with Tommy Browning, Red Snapper with Jim McDonald gives you an excellent bottom show. And redfish at Apalachicola gives you red fishing like you've never seen it before. So ask for Outdoors with Archie Phillips, Volume 9, Saltwater, at your local video store or contact your sporting goods dealer. Jerry, I sure have enjoyed this hunt, and I know like yesterday where we went out and did all the scouting, that's as important as go hunt, jumping in the woods. That's right, getting scouting a day ahead of time really pays off. And uh, all these little tips and hints and the way you call and the way you don't call and when to call and and when they don't gobble, how you can catch them when they, even when they don't gobble, that's just fantastic. And actually, I, I really appreciate being with the old master with 278 turkeys <laughs> under your belt. That's I some see. more turkey hunting. And folks, it's Jerry Gardner from down around Harpersville, Alabama, Hardy Dixie to turkey calls, and most especially a real great fella and a top-notch turkey hunter. Y'all stay tuned again for some more outdoors with Archie Phillips. <laughs>